In 2 Samuel chapter 10, David goes to visit an old friend, the son of an old friend. And he sends ambassadors there, and these people are attacked. They're sent as friends to help out, and they're attacked. Look at this in verse number 4. Wherefore, and none took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle even to their buttocks and sent them away. In verse 4, it's making a point here. Listen, in their culture especially, having a full beard was a big deal. It was sort of a sign of manhood. And it's even that way a little bit today. Right? When you get a teenage boy, a young man, and he starts to have a little bit of that fuzzy, that peach fuzz come in. He's got a little bit of this scraggly look. Well, he's proud of what he has, right? But all the more, if you get to be a man that has decided to grow a beard, and that's what you have, and I've got a good-sized beard today, and I let it grow out more than I normally do, and if you were to hold me down and cut half of my face, it would be an embarrassment and a shame unto me. Now, that was especially true in their culture. And they knew this, and he says, these people are coming from David. David sent them to help and to be a helper, right, with good intentions. And here this guy, because he's so paranoid, decides he's going to hurt them. How? By shaming them. By shaming them. By hurting who they appear to be. Cutting. Can you imagine somebody with a full beard and half your face shaved off? You'd say, well, that looks pretty funny, my friend. Right? And look, I know people have some pretty weird hairstyles these days, but nobody really goes for that because that's just odd. That's bizarre. That's weird. Why put all the effort into growing out one side and have it bare or bald on the other side? It is a shame. So that's what's happening. And you see it also pictured here in what he does to their clothing. Look at verse 4 again. He took off one half of their beards, the second half of the verse, and cut off the garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. You understand? Your garment's cut in the middle. If you cut my shirt halfway this way, well, the whole shirt would fall off, right? So imagine a long coat, and imagine multiple garments where they literally cut it in half to expose your shame, to show nakedness, okay? So this king intentionally did this to hurt these guys, to hurt David. He's trying to attack David, and he wants to expose them and make them look bad. So what does he do? He shaves off their beard, and he cuts their clothes. When the new IFB shaves your beard, when the new IFB takes you and cuts half your beard off and cuts half your clothes off and shows your buttocks and tries to shame you and make you ashamed of something when you've done nothing wrong, you come in to help and what do they do? They want to shame you. They want to embarrass you. They want to falsely accuse you of having bad intentions when all you were doing was there to help somebody in a time of need. Isn't that interesting? This king knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. Look at verse number 5. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. When David gets wind of what happened, he did what to my men? These are my mighty men. These are my helpers. They're here doing the work of the Lord. And you want to shame them? You want to hurt them? You want to cast their name away, right? What happens when other people, hey, the new IFB, they take us and by name, oh, throw them in the dumpster. Oh, these people are bad. They're wicked. Their children are reprobates. Oh, Adam, oh he's a thief. He's stolen something. Unjustified, unright. You see what David says? Hey, Terry. He says, you've been made greatly ashamed, he says in verse 5. The king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. There's a time of healing when something bad happens in life. When you lose a family member, there has to be a time of mourning. And it's easy to look at somebody else while they're mourning and say, well, I'm man enough. I wouldn't need to mourn if I was in that situation. Yeah, let it happen to you. And you're the man crying like a baby because you've been hurt. Because you've lost somebody that meant something to you. There, it's necessary. There is a time to weep. There is a time to mourn. There is a time for war. There is a time for hate. Man, there, sometimes in life we don't appreciate the sunshiny days until we get a cold and a rainy Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? It's necessary. God knows what He's doing. God knows what He's doing. And, and this situation was allowed. This happened ultimately to give God the glory through it all. When they told it unto David, because he sent it to them, because the men were greatly ashamed, and the king said, tarry at Jericho 
until your beards be grown and then return. In the end of verse 5, and then return. These men did not fall out of the fight. These men had a disastrous time in their life. They had, I mean, they had devastation, destruction, shame for nothing wrong that they did. They went out of their way to help somebody else, and they were attacked, they were belittled, they were shamed, they were hurt. They were held down and hurt and abused to make them ashamed. The king stepped in and he said, Wayne, heal. You must heal first. And when that time of healing is up, it's time to get back up on your feet and return. To get back into the battle. When the new IP shaves your beard, what do you do? You mourn. You weep the loss. You count the friends that now consider you a reprobate. You pray for them. You think about the victories you've had throughout the year, soul winning and all the great things and the, th the friends you've had. And you say, well, it's all in the rear view now. But you know what? God is still on the throne. I'm still going to serve God. We're going to weep and mourn. We're going to get through a difficult time. And we have the beards are grown. It's at the end of the year. It's time to get up and return and get back in the battle. Like it. Isn't it true? Mm -hmm. Isn't it profound? They go to war. They go to battle. They even hire some help to go against them. It doesn't matter. All, this, all these hirelings start speaking up and saying things that aren't true and attacking. So the, the, in the fervor, they, all, they, they, they stir up other camps to attack you and come after David and his mighty men here. But these mighty men, hey, their beards are back. They got their clothes on. They're dignified. And they got up to return to the battle. He says, and then returned. These men lost their beard, but it didn't matter. They returned to the battle. Look at verse number 12. Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. They said, hey, God will get the victory. Let us be men. And when he says play men here, you have to understand that word in their culture, especially the older men. It's not like we say the kids are just playing around like they're wasting time. Here he's saying, listen, if you're a man, act like a man. Be a man. Stand up. Return to the battle. Who cares what you've had in the past? Let's keep moving forward. Let's get back into this battle. Let's return to the battle and let's be men. Let's have courage and let's glorify God for the cities of our Lord God. For the Lord do that which seemeth him good. You say, here I am, Lord. All I have is the sword that you've given me. I'm, I'm not going to tarry anymore. I'm going to stand up and get back in this battle and you lead the way, Lord, and you do whatever seems good with you. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let God get the glory. Heavenly Father, thank you for our church in this time of popcorn preaching you've given us, Lord.